35 years ago today, on April 24th, 1987, the Today Show aired an interview with bluesman Robert Cray, conducted by Rona Elliott. Cray was riding the wave of his just-released Strong Persuader album, which would go multi-platinum in multiple countries and chart all around the globe. And it was the highest charting blues album in 25 years. Cray talked about the lack of support for the blues in America compared to Europe. Whereas in America, blues and jazz might get a couple hours on public radio. But over in Europe, with much more free-form radio formats, his song could be played back-to-back -back with a Madonna number. Difference between music appreciation in Europe and in America it might be different now in the digital era, but back then, I mean, I heard of Robert Cray when I went on my first English business trip in 1985. That's when I bought a, a Robert Cray album because he was all over the NME and Melody Maker and was the buzz of London, unknown in America for a good 18 months. But by the time this interview aired, he was very well known and helping to get the blues back into the public's focus. The, the blues may have many fathers, but how much of a future does it have? Today, music correspondent Rona Elliott says it's going to be okay. That's if Robert Cray has his way. Good morning, Rona. Good morning, Brian. Robert Cray has been causing a stir with his new album, Strong Persuader, and his club performances around the country. He's won the WC Handy Award. He's worked with Tina Turner on her TV special, and he's opening for Eric Clapton on tour. Cray's been playing with his band for 12 years now, and he is considered by many to be the future of the blues. They're saying it is that they exist, but nobody really pays attention to them. Why is everybody paying attention to you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess probably... Uh because I'm black and I'm young and I like this music a whole lot, you know. And I decided quite a while ago that, you know, I just want to play the music and that's it. And that's the most important thing. And so if you really like what you're doing, it's going to show. That's what my dad always taught, taught me anyway. You know? there, there are so many people who are calling you, the, you know, the future of the blues and the person carrying the flame. Do you think that's accurate? And is it fair to you that people are kind of putting that burden on you? It's, uh... It's something that's, that I'm not going to pay, pay any mind to. I mean, I like playing the kind of music that I do. That's too big of a burden to try to carry. And so I just don't think about it. I just, I'm just going to have fun doing what I do. Blues is a part of one of the many musics that we like, you know, because we are the Cray Band, and, you know, people have, all the guys in the group have different influences, and so we're just going to let the music just be what it is, but we're going to sing songs about real life. To weave a story. How did you find out you had that, especially when you're writing? I mean, that is really part of that tradition. That is, that is a big part of the tradition. Um, well, when I, when I first, I didn't understand that until I got in my 20s, when finally I got my heart busted. And, and uh, then I started, I started paying attention to the songs. Sometimes they'd make you smile, sometimes they'd make you cry. When you're sad, they'd make me cry. And uh, I also realized that when, when, uh, when I go see somebody, a, a performing musician on stage, that person up there might be able to save, save me from whatever's ailing me. And, that's, and, and realizing that, that's what you have to do for people, you know, that come to see, come see me, you know. Why do you think we've lost sight of the blues for the past 15 years? They just haven't had the importance that they had in the late 60s, really. Where do you think they went in terms of the public consciousness or in terms of radio's consciousness? When you talk about blues music and, and, and related musics, uh, I mean, that's reality, that's the truth. And uh, a lot of music came and went, but it's like every once in a while you gotta get a little crazy. Now you had enormous success in Europe before having the kind of success you're having now over here. What do you think goes on over there, in England specifically, that they welcomed you with such open arms that took America, you know, 10 years to catch up? Well, it's been the case in England and Europe for a long time that they've always looked to America for American music, you know. America has, has the best music, you know, country, jazz, blues, rock. It's all American music. But uh, we don't pay attention to what goes on in our own backyard. And we, when we put everything on, in different uh, classifications on the radio. You hear blues two hours on a weekend on public broadcasting. 
you know, your jazz music the same way, you know, and it's, it's a shame. Like listening to the radio in England, I could hear like uh, little Johnny Taylor to Madonna back to back. Everybody gets a chance to be heard, and that was our case in England. Say goodbye. And I can hear him slam the door, walk away. Right next door, I hear that woman start to cry. And I should go to her, but what would I say? I want to write a song that's going to make everybody cry before it really makes them come to their senses and feel real good about the whole thing. You know, just bring out a cry. Besides the critical acclaim, Cray's album is currently number 14 on Billboard's pop charts. That is the highest charting for a blues album on the pop charts in nearly 25 years. Brian? Thanks, Ronald. Too bad we don't have time to show those shoes. We'll come back in just a moment, <laughs> right after this. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw on Cleveland Live Music, make sure to click on the subscribe icon. And Patreon and, and GoFundMe information is, is below as well. Keep it going. Keep it going.